Well, hello and uh, welcome to Edison Light Globes. Uh, I'm Phil Greenwood, and today we're going to do a wiring of a 120 volt ES socket. So this is uh, E26, it's a 26 mil thread. Um, I think invented by Edison, so that's why the Edison screw. Or yes. Uh, these are used uh, obviously in uh, 120 volt mains countries like North America, um, they're used in Japan. I think there's other, a few other countries where Canada. they use North America, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Canada. So Canada is part of North America, so yeah, we, 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 we use these for customers in Canada. Now, the reason why we're doing this today is because we do have a lot of customers who are not in America, uh, don't have access to this hardware, but do create their own lighting solutions, but need to supply American customers. Now these are uh, really high quality, um, solid brass uh, lamp holder, socket. I'll have to keep saying that because it, these are actually called sockets in North America. And we have to keep remembering that Americans have got a, a different name for everything. And look, in, in fact, see that? That's a socket. But for the purpose of the demonstration, this is a socket. So, if you're building um, custom lighting or lighting solutions and you need to supply customers in North America for 120 volt, these are UL listed, 120 volt compliant, good hardware with integration with existing hardware that we would normally use in 240 volt situations, but we can adapt certain different bits of hardware to suit these. So, basically they come, uh, for us specifically, they come uh, made up in these colours. So we have uh, solid brass, uh, it's polished or natural brass, nickel plated brass, antique brass, and again, bronze. So our standard range of hardware colours. Uh, so what we're going to do now is attempt to explain for wiring a solution that includes a cord grip. Now this is an integral because it's not generally um, a, a hardware item in North America where a cord grip hung cable hung pendant is a standard solution but this particular socket we have adapted to suit that application which becomes a very common thing with vintage light globes. So the first thing we do is we'll disassemble this socket. So in this case, we'll take off the cord grip component. We'll also disassemble the cord grip. So remove all the parts and try and do it up in the same spot. So take all the parts apart. Oops, that's got two of them. I hate those. Also take apart the barrel of the lamp holder. We'll push out the connecting um, or the connector, which is aluminium and I think plastic. It's very common to um, uh, UL listed sockets. They all have this connector part, which has the two connection points for the uh, electricity or the electrical current, the mains, 120 volt to the, to the bulb or the lamp. So we also have the cap, the ring and the outside case I, I suppose. Now these have a, an insulating component which is a piece of cardboard which is uh, unique to North American uh, sockets. Now I would remove, on this occasion I'd remove the cap part. So the first thing we need to do is just open up here, I'll explain this bit. This is unique to us. Now because we're trying to here make a pendant it is advisable to have a ground wire. Now, uh, traditionally in North America, what we've seen is electricians will create a pendant with a bare cable, and then they would run a separate earth wire or ground wire somewhere to the um, socket so that they earth this base. Now, it doesn't absolutely need to be earthed, but it should and it could be, it's isolated so that no connections will touch the base by virtue of this cardboard 
caper, which is probably safe, but not as safe as it could be. So we, we're going to create an earthed version of, of this. So this is actually an earth tab, very similar to our bayonet or B22 system. It's just a, a connection to the outside. So we're going to connect the ground wire to this. So the first thing we need is the cable. And you may notice the cable is also 120 volt. It's a little bit thicker to carry the lower voltage. It's also that they have different colors to 120 uh, to 240 volts. Uh, so it's black, white, and a dark green. So now, the first thing we'll do is, because we'll, we're using a braided cable, we're trying to keep the braid tidy. And the first thing we need is the cord grip cap. And in this case, because we've got separated cord grip parts, we'll just put the, oops, sorry? Other way, cord grip flip it. Oh yeah, oh, well, that would have been fun. So it needs to go on pointy side first. The next thing we'll do is we'll put that down and we're going to connect the um, our cord grip base to the threaded 10 mil threaded entry type socket. And this gets bonded on with a little grub screw so that can't come off. Now we can get this component wired by starting with the ground wire. As I say, this is a bit unique to us, but at least if you do need a ground, this will do it. We'll strip the cable, we'll twist, only needs to be shortish, about half an inch. We'll then feed that back into that ground connector, tighten that, and now we are earthed. Now the next thing is to put this cardboard component back in and I'm going to attempt to get this a little bit longer so I can show you but I'll put that on first. Now we've got the two cables that are left. We have the active and neutral or the hot and the cold I would imagine and we have two terminals. One is like a brass colour and one is like a silver colour. That's fairly traditional. And Louis will know which one's hot or active, Louis. The hot one is the centre pin which is gold. Which is which cable? Which is the black cable. So right. black is hot. Like burnt toast. And white is cold. So black is hot. I don't understand the thing. We're going to cut this or strip this cable with a little bit more length than what we normally would because style of connection is less than ideal. Uh, I would prefer the 240 volt system but we're stuck with this one. So we undo this screw and we'll put that on and twist in a clockwise the, direction. Is that the centre pin? Hey? Is that the centre pin? Which one's hot? It's hot. Which one's hot? Man? Brass centre pin. Brass is hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and not what I'm doing. Look at the bottom of it as well. Doing. No, yeah, so that's the centre pin. It's connected to this, which is the active. And the active always should be the centre pin because it's the, the one you won't touch when you're undoing the globe. So, there's a couple of ways to do this. I've seen this done a number of different ways, but I'm going to attempt to do it at least in a way that's reasonable. Didn't, I don't have my little pliers and my eyes aren't the best. I can't do that. So I'm going to attempt to spin that around a couple of times, probably just once in. But you really need a, a good connection to the cable without anything sticking out. So obviously winding that around in a clockwise direction will enable it to sort of stay tight when you do the screw up in a clockwise direction. Uh, that's pretty good. I can't see too much wrong with that. It's not ideal, but for the demonstration, let's see if we can do this one a little bit better. So again, a nearly an inch, probably three quarters of an inch strip. Um, you can actually start, this is the other way to do it, you can actually create a loop if you want. Hook that loop on and then Tighten that loop. That's another way to do it. I think there's probably 20 ways to do this. Um, and it's possible, 
It is possible, and if anybody's out there who absolutely knows, is there an absolute legitimate way to do this? It's not obvious what that is, but for the purpose of a demonstration, be aware that I've heard a lot of different solutions. So, provided we're stuck on correctly, and provided we don't have any cables um, emerging from there, like loose cable, we'll be fine. So now we pull back this braided cable, and you'll notice that the cardboard cap is back in place, and it doesn't cover the earth cable, it doesn't need to because it's not shielding it. The earth cable is up above the cardboard. So now we're going to get those roughly in position and we're going to line up one of these black tabs with these two little brass sticky atty bits. They've probably got a technical name but anyway. Then the trick is to make sure that you don't forget to put the alignment in. And in this situation I can put the can't put it on, can I, Louis? Oh, yes, I can. Yep. This is the uh, cover. You can see I've got a little bit of braid here from that cable, which is not ideal. I don't actually want to see that, so I'm going to just push that in. It doesn't want to, it's being, being a bit persistent. We'll ignore that. So keep me in the center. So we're trying to get the best we can. We've got to keep the cardboard on the inside in location, we get that pushed up. Now, this is where it gets a bit awkward. You've got to hold that still, and you've got this very large thread which you're trying to get square onto the socket. And you will just give it a slight, there we go, you'll feel it when it goes in. Once it gets in, we'll do that up reasonably tight and give it a bit of a tweak. It's got a knurled top on it so you can grab it. And that should keep going until until it stops. And there we have it. Now a lot of times we see these um, suspended as a pendant without any cable grip, which is sort of, it's common. And it's, it's probably common in North America. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that safety of the cable grip. Now this is gonna be a bit awkward because I've got these separate um, small cable grips, but persist, we will. So we place one half in on the bottom, and again, the square end in, we place the second one. We just want to hold these in position and get our cable grip cap pressed over the top. It's getting really tight. Once we start to thread, it then will emerge from the top. And then we have the cable grip coming out of the top and that's now squeezed tight, clamped to the cable, which will stop the cable from being pulled so that the connections inside here don't come loose. So now we have a finished pendant socket uh, that is earthed and it has a three core cable so the earth's hidden, it's not visible. Uh, we can earth the other end of this into the ceiling, into the the structure, the, the ground wire. So it's a very safe way to, to create a standard pendant. Now the other thing we do is we manufacture parts or supply parts manufactured that uh, convert what is this UNO thread which you, you would know in North America there are some components that attach to this thread. Um, galleries and various things or fitters, sorry, I've got to use the right word, a fitter that would attach to this. They're usually a little bit flimsy and a little bit um, light on in terms of what weight they can take. Um, now, because this is a very solid um, tube-based uh, brass, it can take a lot of weight and take a lot of wear. So what we've done is we've made a special barrel, so let's say it again, a barrel adapter. It's got the UNO thread on the inside and it goes to our shade ring thread on the outside. So this will then take our threaded shade rings, which carry a lot more weight atta and attach to what are regular E27 or 240-volt type uh, components. So what this enables you to do is to attach what are our standard item 
uh, designed for 240 volts and E27, our well, galleryless or fiddleless bolt-on shades. Now this one is solid brass, uh, just just to go with the brass socket. But when we screw this on, you can see this shade ring here. That bonds the the lampshade to the socket. I didn't get the noise, but that's a really good solid shade now. So it's not like a, a, a fitter, like a, a, a glass top shade or whatever. This is actually really solid, so it suits suits this component. Now you can move that around and center it too. It's a bit loose, but that's it there. So a good opportunity for uh, people who are doing. Um, versions of um, their lighting from 240 volt manufacturing and trying to convert to 120 volt. You'll need the cable, you'll need the socket and possibly the barrel, who knows. Uh, now the other components that you can uh, use with these sockets, you can obviously put a, I've got to undo the screw, but you can obviously put a hook in there. Um, so the hook won't screw in, yes it will, look at that. That's a 10 mil hook. It's not going to quite go in. Um, we would normally shorten these, but that can turn that into a, a hook type lamp holder, a socket. I keep saying it. A hook type socket so that this can be suspended from uh, stainless steel wire, chain, fishing line, whatever you like. And that takes the tension off the cable so the cable doesn't need a cord grip. It, it's a sort of a more of a decorative effect. It can also give you an ability to carry a little bit more weight than the cable alone will carry. So if you've got a large glass shade, for instance, this won't be an option. Um, the other option obviously is to just use an all thread nipple to attach to a fixed lamp, bedside lamp, table lamp, whatever. So there it is, our E26, uh, 120 volt UL listed uh, sockets available both from our international website and from our US website, obviously. Um, so in combination with our other hardware, these are uh, perfectly suitable, and so you can convert, or you can use these to manufacture your own lighting or repair. So bear that in mind for now. That's it. Subscribe if you like the video. Uh, we'll be back again with another lamp holder or socket demonstration of wiring. Thank you.